Wow, this is amazing. Welcome to Jurassic Park! ¿Quieres un sándwich con queso? Sí, tiene eso cheese. Es cow cheese. No, no se puede el chicken. Just you know why. Why you and I will buy and buy. Just you know why. بعيد اللهاشنا Hello and welcome to America Ninja Warrior where competitors from different cities will compete to win a million dollars and have a chance to be crowned the next America Ninja Warrior. I'm Matt Eisman and I'm Arbar Jamajamiya. Today we are here at San Antonio Christian High School, located in the great Lone Star State of San Antonio, Texas, where many athletes will get a chance to participate on obstacles on campus. And today we're going to look at our first competitor, Stuart Lashway. Stuart has been training for this moment for many months, and this will be his first year on American Ninja Warrior. Yes, Stuart is currently a student at the University of Central Arkansas Baptist Tech Central University, where he plans on studying construction. He looks to be the first American Ninja Warrior. All right, Stuart will be our first contestant of the day, and so far he's looking strong on that balance beam. Ooh, and he finishes with determination and strength. Up next, running on the course will be Dwayne Deuteronomy, who is a plumber from a small town of Bluebell, Montana. Let's go over there to interview him. When I was a young lad, my father gave me my old American Ninja Warrior course. And ever since that day, I've been training countless hours on it and so I can become the best American Ninja Warrior. If anyone stands in my way, I will tell them, Hello, my name is Dwayne Deuteronomy. You are running against me, prepared to lose. In the words of Inigo Montoya, there will be blood tonight. Oh, it's Mrs. Deuteronomy to you. Well, I am Dwayne's mom, and I'm so excited to see him run in this competition. I think he will go very far, and I can't wait to see how well he does. He's been training countless hours, and. You know, if any obstacles he faces, I just tell him to go around, you know. To so go around, okay? Go around. Anyways, I can't wait to see how far he goes in this competition, and I hope he becomes the next America Ninja Warrior. Well, Dwayne will start on the balance beam. A little shaky on the balance beam. So now he moves on to the monkey bars. Moving through the monkey bars with no trouble at all. Now he makes his way over to the wheels of fate. So far, he's going strongly through them. And wow, he finishes strong yet again. Let's take another look at that replay. Wow, you can see how he goes through it with one fluid motion and doesn't get held up at all. Starts off struggling a little bit. Whoa, he makes a complete turn on the wheel. Wow, Argbar, I don't know how he is still going so strong and has no fatigue at all. Looking fatigued, but really pushing through strong. Now after that series of obstacles, he will now face his most feared obstacle yet, the warped wall. Yes, the warp wall has been extended two inches higher from the following years and will make it very difficult for him to finish. Yes, very difficult. Wow, look at that. He's going up the wall. He's going up, standing on top of the warp wall, about to hit the wall. He hits the buzzer. True last way finishes the race. Yeah. All right, let's go back one more time and check out that replay. Yeah. All right, let's go back one more time and check out that replay. Now you see he swiftly runs up the warp wall and hits the buzzer. And you can see the enthusiasm. 
Hello face. Wow, that is a very enthusiastic face, as you see there. Hello darkness, my old friend. Well, he appears to fall and trip on his first try of the warp wall. Well, that's just unfortunate. Yep, it looks like he'll still have two more tries, though. Okay, now he's going for his second run at the warp wall. Ooh, and it looks like he's going to tie a shoe. Tie a shoe. That's going to waste him another turn at the warp wall, and now he only has one left. Well, Artbar, he should be able to make this last jump. He, his reach is eight foot tall, and the warp wall is only foot, seven foot six. No! Man, that is just unfortunate. We interrupt this program to bring you... Back problems got you down? Athlete's foot taking over your life? No problem. Salt is the answer. Salt is the future. Salt is the solution. Get salty. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Moody Scheindlin. The people are real. The cases are real. The rulings are final. This is Judge Moody. Bum bum dun 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 dun. Bum bum dun 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 dun. On this episode of Judge Moody, a 28-year-old doctor, bum, bum, Robert Ortega, bum, 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 is suing former 30-year-old nurse assistant, Joseph Grimes, bum, bum, for breaking dun, his toilet dun, dun, during a dun, Christmas party. Dun, bum, bum, dun, 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 dun. All right, for Judge Moody. Thank you, you may all be seated. Okay, so today's case. So, Dr. Ortega, according to your claim, your former nurse assistant, Joseph Grimes, allegedly cracked your toilet at your Christmas party. Are you seeking compensation? Yes, yes, your honor, I am. Well, so how many times has Mr. Grimes been to your apartment? Well, you see, we're business partners, and he's been over quite a bit, but he just recently started getting large, so I think that's why it happened now. So where was this crack on the toilet? Well, it didn't just have one crack. It was completely shattered. There's about 27 pieces, and it was just everywhere. So how do you think the toilet shattered? Well, I mean, he is a very large man, as you can see. So you don't know? Oh, no. He was the only one in the restroom at the time of the party. I don't for sure it was him. Assuming you are correct that he broke the toilet while he was using it, why do you think he's responsible for it? Oh, I am correct. He was the only one in the toilet. I made sure before the party I cleaned it, and he was the only one who went to the restroom, so it had to have been him. Don't you think it's right to seek compensation? That's incorrect. The toilet could have just worn out. Oh, no, it didn't wear it out. It didn't wear out at all. He even came up and told me he broke it, and he even got towels to clean it up. Hush! Just, just you tell me what happened. I sat down on the toilet and I heard a crack. Let me see the pictures. So, all I want to know is did you get a hammer? Did you destroy it? I mean, what happened to the toilet? Because that's pretty bad. No, Your Honor, no, I didn't do that. Oh, but he sat on the toilet and he it broke and we heard it and thump. That's the that you and say we were at the Christmas party and it was just a big old thump. Okay, I agree with you that the toilet broke while he was using it. That doesn't mean he broke it. Oh, yes, that it does. That doesn't mean that he's responsible for it. Your Honor, I mean, time toilet, out, I'll take a 30. My toilet broke just a week ago. And I, I didn't go around looking for the last person who sat on it. Well, that's not because no, he, he sat on it. Myself. Look, see how big this thing is? You're a man, you're a doctor, you can afford a new toilet. Oh, I can't. That's all. Hey, what being you might? Like Ben, that's Kahar met Jim and Jim College Essay for Harvard. And had their day that get healed to a volunteer. That is good. Like Ben Kahar, noon have ik gawin. Up to salon, day can ik beer in. Well, moon ate van din kunkas? Ni, ik ga om ik te beer in op chamagasha. 
Just you know why. 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 to have you back. Thanks, dude. Eat Bombinet. Always satisfies. Hey, you made me draw my pumpkin loaf. Whoa, how am I reading your subtitles? Yes, please. I'm not supposed to take things from strangers. I should get going now if you're not gonna give me my pumpkin love. No thanks, but I'll be taking my pumpkin loaf. Mate, a lehashna. Welcome to this episode of Finding Bigfoot, where our professional team of Bigfoot hunters will go on a quest to find Bigfoot. I'm Jacqueline, and I specialize in Bigfoot sounds. I'm Ashley, and I'm a Bigfoot tracker. Hello, my name is Dale, and I'm an expert Bigfoot trapper. I won the National Trapping Championship in 2002, and I'm looking forward to trapping Bigfoot. I'm Liv, and I'm the equipment manager for all the Bigfoot hunts. Okay, so we're here at the San Antonio Christian School campus, and we've heard some sightings of Bigfoot here, and we're going to go and interview some people. All right, so we have had many reported sightings of Bigfoot on this campus. We just wanted to know if you have seen any sightings of Bigfoot or any sounds? Yes, I have actually. Oh, really? Where exactly did you see Bigfoot? Well, I saw him over there around the track, crossing the road and jumping over the fence by building T. Oh, interesting. Did you hear any sounds, specific sounds? Well, yeah, I did. He actually goes something like, uh, Yes, definitely angry. Yeah, I, got, I got scared. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, thank, hey, you. thank you. We'll be on the lookout. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, so we're Bigfoot investigators and we've heard a lot about Bigfoot sightings on this campus and we're wondering if you have encountered Bigfoot or seen him anywhere. Yes, I have. But I don't normally talk about this because it's kind of embarrassing. But, mm -hmm. you know, people don't believe you. Mm -hmm. But I have seen Bigfoot on this campus. You knew something was coming and you knew it was bad, but you didn't know what it was. So we've heard some reported sightings of Bigfoot on this campus and we're here investigating see if you've seen him. Yes, well actually I didn't see him right at first. Um, I heard some scratching outside on my, um, uh, out there on the deck there. And so, and you can see the scratch marks are still there and my cat went missing. And so we found, um, uh, that's what we found out on the deck. So that's all that's left. And, uh, but I, I was, I went to the back 40, was able to take a picture. You can see that there. So, um, yeah, so well, if he exists. Any more sightings of Bigfoot, just 
Okay, awesome. Thank you. There has been reported Bigfoot sightings on the Saks campus. Have you seen Bigfoot? There and, have? Yes. You know, I did see some pretty big footprints backstage in the dust, but mm. I'm... I didn't know it was Bigfoot. Yeah. Have you ever Little. come in personal contact with the Bigfoot? Like, maybe seen him? I've seen shadows of him. Shadows. Okay, so we bumped into Morgan who said that she saw Bigfoot, and now we're going to ask her her story and if she spotted him. Well, I was out here taking care of the goats when I saw a big hairy beast and all of a sudden he made a very loud noise as he was trying to get into the barn and so I ran off, but I haven't seen him since. All right, so now that we know that Bigfoot loves to eat goats, we're gonna set up a trap on this barn. So whenever he comes up to get a goat, we're gonna trap him in the barn and we're gonna stay uh, out of the way and be looking out for him. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the high ground and y'all are gonna go down here and we're just gonna be looking out for Bigfoot. Okay, so I'm going to be up here taking the high ground while the other investigators are going to be down there by the barn. I'm going to see if I can find Bigfoot from up here. Uh, let's see. Safety first, so put on some gloves for sanitation. Yes. All right. There we go. Now I can safely view, view Bigfoot from a high vantage point. Hey guys, I think I see a Bigfoot. Did y'all see anything? Jacqueline, make some Bigfoot sounds. 